Curtis Lewa. Two young people decided to form their own organization called the Guardian Angels. You see them with red berets. When you see them, you get a nice, secure feeling in your heart. I admire Curtis Sliwa, and I think that he takes his life into his own hands doing what he does. Curtis Sliwa, the Guardian Angels founder and leader. We've got Curtis Sliwa from WAPC Radio. Curtis Sliwa, legendary New York. The Drive at 5 with Curtis Sliwa. What happened today? Why? And what's next? Live, local, on it. 77 WAPC. Seven minutes after the hour of five, as we take you home on the drive at five, yours truly, Curtis Schlewa at the helm, and I'm going to make a lot of people very, very unhappy today. Because it's time to cold bus individuals who have been part and parcel of what has led to uh, the actions uh, of, let me call them the mutton chef, of grifters. As you know, Reichberg and Rechnitz. These are the two contributors to your mayor comrade Bill de Blasio. And uh, as a result of all their connections, both in City Hall, at One Police Plaza, at precincts around the city, especially the 90th Precinct in Williamsburg, the 71st Precinct in Crown Heights, and the 66th in Borough Park, they were able to secure favors from high-ranking police officials and others. That has led U.S. Attorney Preet Bahara to... Uh, make the first of many arrests of police department personnel. The most recent four, but three white shirts, three superiors. And what's most interesting is, is that when we were first reporting to all of you, the escorts that were being provided by the police that were unreported, the helicopters that were used to fly over a wedding to impress the guests, police helicopters, uh, upstate New York, and then at the start of this week, the escort that was provided to the billionaire oligarch, uh, one of the largest diamond merchants in the world from Israel, who had come in and was given a not only a police escort, but had a lane closed in the Lincoln Tunnel. And we all know about lane closings uh, from the ongoing investigation into the George Washington Bridge retaliatory lane closings. That were done by uh, Shamu El Hefe, Chris Christie, who claims he knew nothing about it. I know nothing. Sergeant Schultz, right of Stalag 13. I know nothing. Yet he knew plenty. And his sickle fans, toadies, and lackeys. But put that aside. Because that involves not only the NYPD, but the Port Authority of New York. And as you know, when that headline hit the New York Post, immediately, Andrew evilized Cuomo, King Cuomo II, said, this is an outrage. I want a full-scale investigation. I want to find out how this is at all possible. Well, I'm here to tell all of you, ladies and gentlemen, that there is nobody uh, outside of the Orthodox uh, and Hasidic community who is close to them, closer to them than this goy, this Gentile, Curtis Lee. I've worked with their patrols, the Shamarim patrols. I've attended their meetings. I've been in and out of their communities on a regular basis. But I want to attribute to what I'm going to be saying today, to being embarrassed by a caller to the Curtis Saying Kubi show on Tuesday, I believe it was, Steve, who called from Staten Island and basically uh, took me to the outhouse and gave me uh, a lot of constructive criticism that had me rethinking how cavalier I was and not taking these charges as seriously as we all should. Uh, I'm, I'm a retired lieutenant. I worked in the 6-6 hmm. uh, for a number of years. I also worked as a sergeant in the 7-1 for a number of years. Hmm. And I think you guys are being a bit disingenuous when you start acting like you don't know what's going on in this city. I mean, in the 9-0, the 7-1, the 6-6, the city community runs the show. I, I okay, do, so let's, I, I, I let's specify. Hold on, uh, hold on uh, Lieutenant. Uh, 90 Williamsburg, 71 Crown Heights, 66 Borough Park, just so you understand. Our, our listeners. Right. The 71 is the Lubavitch, the 90 is the Satmar, and the 66 is the Bubble. Yes, yes. And, and they run the show in this city. 
And I'm, I'm not, that's not an anti-Semitic remark. It, it is simply a fact. Now, these police escorts that have been the focus of the investigation so far, provided by top uh, personnel in the police department in exchange for gratuities, bakshish, and diamonds. That's right. In many instances, they were given diamonds to give to their gumadas, their girlfriends, their hookers, uh, their wives, whomever. Or, or just to you so that they could take it out and wholesale it or retail it themselves. And there is a synergy here that needs to be exposed to everyone. First off, everybody knows what's going on. Shamu El Hefe, Chris Christie in New Jersey, knows of this practice. And if he says he doesn't, he's a liar. Uh, Andrew Evilized Cuomo King Cuomo II, son of Mario Facha Bruta, Cuomo King Cuomo I. Uh, he acts like he's stunned that a lane of the Lincoln Tunnel was closed by the Port Authority in cooperation with the NYPD for an escort for this big mocker, the big diamond merchant from Israel. He claims uh, he's shocked. He's a liar. First off, it's Christie and it's Cuomo who share the responsibilities of running the Port Authority. And they've been doing this on a regular basis, meaning the Port Authority. And I will tell you that Cuomo and uh, Chris Christie have heard about these things. But again, have acted like they're too busy to know. They don't want to know the nitty gritty details. And as cavalier as I was on Monday and Tuesday, not necessarily thinking and planting myself and being serious about this. They just fluff it off and figure, hey, like Andrew would say, hey, my father used to know about it when he was governor. No biggie. And uh, Chris Christie will say, hey, yeah, Christine Todd Whitley, she knew about it. Uh, and other governors knew about it. And they did on the peripheral edge. They didn't know about it the same way the top commanders at the Port Authority Police Department would know about it. Because obviously they would have to close the lanes. But this is being done on a regular basis. And no records are being kept because now that the investigation is shifting to the Port Authority, all of a sudden, many of them who have served in police departments uh, on the Jersey side or here with the NYPD itself have acted like they have amnesia. They don't know anything about it. Almost no records whatsoever were kept of this. And this is the relationship that exists between top police officials and especially on the New York City side, commanders of local precincts. Just as uh, that caller chastised me and say, you know what goes on at the 90th precinct in Williamsburg, the 66th in Borough Park, uh, the 71st in Crown Heights. It is the precinct commanders who control when the escorts go out. It is the precinct commanders who develop what they call Jewish liaisons to the community. And these generally go to guys who call themselves rabbis. Like when I'm in these communities, every second guy is a rabbi. Yeah, right. Sure. Just like Savage says he's a doctor. Yeah, you're a doctor. Doctor this, pal. So anyway, the point being is people prescribe to themselves certain roles and then they're not asked to show accreditation. Like what should be asked of the so-called rabbis is, where are you a teacher? Where are you clergy? Where are you ordained? And the reason that I'm asking all of this right now is because as the alarms went off in my head, I realized that the one guy who is implicated here because Reichnisch has decided to become a cooperator, but his friend Reichberg calls himself a rabbi. And Reichnisch gave a $25,000 contribution to my very dear friend, Rob Astorino, who is the county executive Republican of Westchester. He used to work here. He was the producer of the morning show of ESPN when they were lodged here with us at WABC. I've campaigned for him in Westchester, campaigned for him to beat Andrew Evil Ice Cuomo the last time. But I don't care if you're friend or foe. You took $25,000 from Reichnitz in order to make Rabbi Reichberg the chaplain for the Westchester County Police and the guy is from Borough Park in Brooklyn, it's like, him? You don't have enough rabbis, big mockers in Westchester County? And the answers have not come forward. Because obviously, when you are appointed a chaplain, you don't have to show any accreditation. Now, if you're a chaplain in a prison, let's say you're assigned to Ossining or Rikers, you have to show accreditation. You have to be able to show, I went and I was ordained at this particular uh, university, religious university, 
and this is where I'm clergy, or this is where I'm a teacher. And that's true if you're a Muslim imam, that's true if you're a pastor, that's true if you're a priest. Why is it you don't have to do it when you're a chaplain of a sheriff's department or you're a chaplain of a police department? And how is it that some of these rabbis can have multiple chaplain roles in multiple counties, in multiple sheriff's departments all over? These are questions that I'm going to continue to address. I don't care how many friends become my foes over this. But they're all associated with the politicians because each of the politicians have their own Jewish liaisons. Now, this is what you get when you're a liaison, a Jewish liaison. You get a police placard. You can put that in your car. And you get the most valued of all IDs, an NYPD clergy liaison ID. What do they need these IDs for? What do they need these placards for? Well, obviously, they get to flex. Uh, they become very prominent in their own community. But their own community members will rat them out and say, that's no rabbi. I'm as much of a rabbi as him. So this is what I'm describing has to be done. If they're really serious in reforming the system so that there's not this quid pro quo between so-called community liaison members and the NYPD. They need to establish an official division at one police plaza. If you want any kind of a police escort, it's got to be approved by this special unit at one police plaza who is answerable only to the police commissioner. So this way, if they're fudging. If they're messing around with these escorts, it's the police commissioner that you hold responsible. And every one of these escorts has to be logged, even if they only go 10 blocks. No more are you to allow police precinct commanders to make these decisions because they're dirty. That's the bottom line. It's synergistic. And the only way you're going to stop this is to give it a colonic, a serious colonic. And I just want to thank... Steve, our caller, for waking me up. He was like smelling sauce to a street smart guy like me who knows better. So if it woke me up, why isn't it waking up anyone at one police plaza or at City Hall where they know this practice goes on on a regular basis? Take the placards back. Take the police IDs back. And if they want to reapply, let them all show up with their proper accreditation. I want to know, where are you a teacher? Where are you clergy? Where were you ordained? Whether you happen to be a pastor, a priest, an imam, or a rabbi. Why won't they do that?